Hi everyone, Aldebar here. This is going to be a run of the Chronoscope Raid on Epic Elite. This can be done on Epic Elite or on Heroic Elite for the maximum amount of favor. And the raid is basically the same. I don't know of any specific differences between the two except for the difficulty. Anyways, you pick it up and then you run over to where the ship is where the ship anchor is, and that's where the entrance to the raid is. Anyways, we're going to enter the chronoscope, and I'm going to hand it over to Warjack. You have arrived at the chronoscope excavation site. Nell Gan is here somewhere, but can this place truly help her find her brother, or is she being deceived? Nell Gan smiles at you and turns to speak to the others. These adventurers are friends of my father's. We should begin the ritual to find my brother as soon as they're ready, Professor Tremus. Professor Tremus gleefully turns to the nightmarish Mind Flayer. Keratrix, begin channeling Nelgan's thoughts into the chronoscope. Now, Miss Nell, this is very important. Think back to the last time you saw your brother. Yes, that was in Stormreach. He was performing at his favorite spot by the Pawn Exchange, the day the Devil Army attacked. The devils overwhelmed us. People were panicking, trying to flee. And I lost sight of Nat. Oh, Nat, where did you go? Nell and her companions vanished into a portal. Before you can follow, a green creature appears out of nowhere and sneers, All right, boys. Dreamus's orders are to kill the squid face and anyone else left here. Hi everyone, Warjack here. As you just noticed, there was a cutscene at the start. Well, this raid is pretty heavy on cutscenes, so all the cutscenes are unskippable in regard to you can't move on to the next part without seeing them, but at least you're not locked in the frame. You can move around. Anyway, this is the, the intro fight. You must kill this bearded devil. And then we can move on. With a blood-curdling scream, the last of Bazdor's crew is dispatched. It appears Caratrix survived their attack. Once you clear the area, talk to the mind player and go to the center. Here I'm going to step into the tavern. You hear the sounds of pillage There's a portal that takes you up to the top of the bank. The east wall of there the are these two vendors here who sell you good weapons, flame touched. And you can buy bolts and arrows. This is just a good tip. You can buy them just in general if you want them. You can stack up on a whole bunch. They don't disappear after you log out or anything. So it's a great item to have. And if you got the chronoscope, you can just come in here on any difficulty and fill up your quiver. Down below you is the marketplace, now a war zone in the midst of a devil invasion. At the center is a huge red tent, but it is not the tent you remember. Something strange is happening there. The market tent you can see down there was how the market used to be back in the early days of DDO. Anyways, after you talk to him, I'm just showing over here, there's Vela. This is, she's actually a dragon in human form. It doesn't say it, but she's actually the boss of Vault of the Night. Just a bit of trivia for you. Anyways, now that I've talked to the guy up the top over the bank, now I'm going to head to the back out into the marketplace. Talking to this guy will bring down the barrier. This raid it takes place in the marketplace and some of the surrounding areas that connect to the marketplace. Um, this big area outside has a whole bunch of monsters and they're optional to clear out. Also some breakables and some guards or whatever they're called, the Stormreach, Stormreach guards that are basically NPCs you click on, like this one, and you can complete an objective, an optional. Anyways, I'll be doing it, so 
it might take a little bit longer. If you do this with a party, it probably goes a bit faster. And I'm just going to clean out a little bit over here and then I'm going to head over to the bank. Not to the bank, sorry, to the tavern. Before I continue to the bank. The way I find the Stormage Guards is I keep on clicking on Select Next. Sometimes it's really hard to find them. They're hidden. So as long as I keep on going Select Next, Select Next, Next, they pop up in my viewfinder and then I can run in that direction. Come on. Come on. Gotcha. Thought he was gonna scam me by being out of range. This raid is a level 6 raid on Heroic and level 20 on Epic. For anybody who's new to raids, this is the lowest level raid. So if you have access to this raid, I definitely recommend this as the first raid you solo. If you don't want to be part of a party, that's fine. Come in here when you're at camp. Do it on Heroic Normal. Just, just to see the quests. Just to run around and complete all the objectives without having any fear, but just, you know, to experience it. As you can, as you can tell, I'm just clearing off the left side. I guess call it the left side of the map when you come up the stairs from that first tavern. And then I'll be heading into the second tavern. In just a minute. But strangely, they do not attack. One of them's that's Nat Gan behind the barrier. The devils appear to be interrogating him about something. The evil Primus begins laying down his demands for Nel Gan's life. You will go to the bank of Kundarek, to their Lord's March branch just next door. There, you must acquire the key to the Gan's deposit box. I don't care what you have to do to get it. Bring the key back to me, and Nelgan might, just might, live to grow into a... There's a shrine in each tavern, and a shrine after each one of the big boss encounters. So, you've got plenty. He's the aggressive type. Good 
luck, fools. As you can see, he has these armor smiths nailing the armor to him. As the rounds continue going on, we keep on losing parts of his armor. Spoiler alert. Just kidding. You can see that he's losing parts of his armor.
I'm not mistaken, there's at least four rounds and that's fixed. And if you kill them before that, the fourth round, third or fourth whatever rounds will still spawn in like a set interval. So if you're doing this in a full party these days and you're way overpowered, you might be surprised when you kill the boss, go to the shrine, and all of a sudden another wave spawns. Guys missing in your arm basically helped us do it. chests and a shrine and you have to talk to this dwarf the banker get a key you have the deposit box key now to return to the Phoenix tavern and trade it for Nelgan's life Dreamus eagerly takes the key and unlocks the deposit box. At last, I have it. The weapon that I travel back in time for. The sliver of time. Now, to keep my bargain, I shall return Nelgan to you as a dying old woman. Ah, that's better. Now that I have stolen her youth for myself, I'm headed for the market tent where I shall kill General Sulamadis with a sliver of time and become the new leader of the Devil Army! <laughs> Clinging to the you have to talk to me again before life, you can take Nell the chest. Wheezes out. My only hope is the Twelve. Leave me Anyways, for now we're done with this tavern. Go quickly. We don't need to visit here anymore. Still if you didn't use the shrine before, you can use it now. Now we need to head back to the first tavern, the one we came from. Most parties would just run back across the marketplace and forget all the optionals, but as I try to do with all of my solo raid videos, I try to complete all the objectives. Well, truth be told, for all of my solo videos, I try to complete all the objectives, if possible. Anyways, so forgive me if this takes a little bit of time. Fun fact, I've been trying to do solo chronoscope since it was heroic. I was like level 8 and I tried to do it. My first attempt was on Reaper. I got all the way to the bank. Well, not very impressive. Second time I tried it on just heroic elite. 
I got past the bank, and I died somewhere around here, next to the water fountain. Yeah, right at this area I died. Uh, after that I realized that I was kind of neglecting my equipment, so I went back and I crafted some HP items, and some concentration, and healing amp, and etc. Basically made sure that my character could heal, and put deal more damage and have more life. And then I gave it another shot. And everything was going great. And somewhere in the middle of it, I get a tell, or rather an invite, from uh, my good mate. So I ignored it. I told him no, because I was recording a video. And then a minute later I get a request again to join my party. So I said, okay, let him join my party. Then he asked me, where are you at? I say, in chronoscope. And then 20 seconds later, he steps in. Rip my solo run of chronoscope. I was already halfway through the second boss when he came in. Regardless, when I finally got to the end area, when I got to the final boss, I step into the final arena, and my character disappears. All I see is just the uh, backside of my glowing eye cosmetic. But my character disappeared. It was like impossible to see where I was. So I step back out through the, the portal. Barrier prevents you from entering the tent and there I go. There I was again. I appeared. So I thought I fixed it. Stepped back into the main area and I disappeared again. Anyways, I told my mate you didn't have to worry about it because regardless, I wouldn't have used that run after that bug. So that was just a funny thing that happened. After that, I gave up on my attempts of finishing it on Heroic. I mean, I could have done it, probably, but I always wanted to move on already and I didn't have patience to wait another three days. So that was that. But anyways, I decided I'll try to do it on Epic. So I tried it on Epic and I failed a few times for different reasons. Some because I died, some due to Wagro. You know. Anyways. After that, I finally waited until I was basically close to cap. I think I was 29, but I gave a good run, and I got all the way to the end, and I defeated it. I completed Epic Elite Chronoscope, and I found out to my dismay that the video took 70-something minutes. Not video, the quest took 70-something minutes. So the video, the entire video, plus the intro and the outro, outro etc., would be even more than that and I just felt like it was just a little too long so I waited until I hit cap and I respect my character into a more DPS oriented rather than tank oriented build just for this quest so I changed up some items got all different equipment stacked myself all up so it would go as fast as possible so hope you're enjoying it I'm sure there's two kinds of people watching this. People are watching it and going, wow, this is incredible DPS. I wish mine was that good. And people are watching this and going, eh, this is lame. I can do that in half and <laughs> twice as fast. Yeah, true. Um, this is what I've got though, so. Anyways, hope you enjoy it. Appreciate all the effort that goes into making these videos. Completing it is one thing, but making a good video out of it is a completely different thing. Try to make sure it's entertaining and not too dragged out. Either way, I appreciate it very much when people watch these videos all the way through. I've been asked a few times why I do all the breakables and stuff. And my answer is for the people who want to see everything done, if I skip anything, well, there's no way to fix it for them. But for the people who want to skip all the stuff, they can just click on the video and move ahead. So tapping move right on your mouse, I'm sorry, on your keyboard while you're watching it on YouTube and move a little bit, a few seconds ahead and skip. It's no big deal, but for anybody who was expecting me to do everything, if I skip anything, there's no going back. So I try to do my best to pick up everything and get everything done. And hopefully it's I you know I get the best of both worlds.
Anyways, killing those Abishai with one shot never gets old, I love it. This guy drove me crazy. For the life of me, I couldn't find where he was. Slowly turning around. Till I got him. Actually, it wasn't him, but whatever. You have rescued a considerable number of Stormreach defenders. I got enough. Their Completed the objective. I just need to kill a few more of these come. devils and I'm fine. There's an interesting thing about this raid, it's uh, one of the old Eberron quests where you get, you know, tokens of the Twelve and fragments of tokens of the Twelve the and he uses the old shard and seal and scroll method for epic items. And the interesting thing is, like many of the adventure chains, I know, like Vault of the Night, uh, the items come from maybe the raid, but the shards and seals come for the rest of the quests and you have to go through a whole bunch of quests you're not sure which quest drops which shield or shard shards usually from raid but the seal which they come from over here this is self-contained so all the items all the shards all the seals and scrolls all come from this single quest so you can just run the same thing actually pretty easy to come in here and farm just for scrolls if you want run around and clear monsters. Seems to be that they spawn infinitely. All the devils out here in the marketplace. You just have to walk away and come back and they come back again. In regards to the items that come from this place, most of the stuff is not relevant today anymore. There is one item that actually does not come from the quest itself. It comes from the quest reward. Um, goggles of time and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they're called anyway they give you 20 spot and search and they have two slots on them and they have haste so they're a nice item if you want to farm it out but there's better stuff already I mean you can get 18 at level 21 all four probably the other item that you might want to use is the charged gauntlets basically it's a pair of gloves that while you wear it it adds i think to your critical hits a elect electrical blast so some added dps that stacks with your melee weapon well that is melee on oh main melee only other than that i don't think there's anything really exciting when it comes to loot in regards to this quest that is still relevant today oh actually there is one thing you can get over here greater tokens of the 12 which can be used for creating the master's gift which is an augment who adds plus five to your xp i actually made a small video short video explaining how it works so Anyways, this is one of the few quests where you can get a greater token of the 12. Is it what I say it's easy to solo? Then, with a good character, I don't think it's hard to solo, it just takes a long time. And even if you run straight to the end, it's still probably going to take a fair 25 minutes uh, if you just do the bosses. And you focus only on that. Of course, if you do it with a party, you can go much faster than that. Well, but 
really the, you know it's an option if you really want to. The Devil's Barrier prevents you, you from the solve this. this way. If you want to go inside, you'll need to... The Devil's Barrier prevents you from entering the tent this way. If you want to go inside, you'll need to find another way in. If I'm not mistaken, it was way back in the day, and there was a live event in DDO and it's called the Devil's Invasion or something like that. And certain things happened in, in, in that live event. One of them is the marketplace. The marketplace tent got destroyed. So this is what the marketplace used to look like back then. Anyways, I'm done with all my objectives and I'm going to move back into this first tavern. Here basically I'm just running back up to the portal takes me to the top of the bank. Whatever the devils are doing in the market tent is manifesting vortex. The sliver of time must be destroyed. It sends me now to the steam tunnels. But it's somewhere in the market tent. The here has opened up a secret way for Anyways, I'm going to go back through, through this tunnels. tavern and take the sh the shrine right now before I continue out. I don't know if you noticed before, but this is the old marketplace. Way back before they had, they had added House Caneth, and before they did all the changes to the entrance to the catacombs. Anyways, that was where we came in from. Here's the steam tunnels. This is going to be the second boss fight, second big boss fight. There's the entrance fight, who is kind of a boss. I don't know that bearded devil, but or well, whatever. Only hours ago, Devil Second purple name the boss fight. tunnels in an attempt to flank the twelve. At least some of them are still here. You see a grotesque Orthon captain below, sporting a large repeating crossbow on his arm. Anyways, the gimmick here is that he has his crossbow and he teleports around and shoots you. He jumps to different locations and he spawns in these rounds of these green de bearded devils. Uh, I don't know what happened over here. I guess I overwhelmed him with so much DPS that he forgets to teleport. So he just stays stuck in one location the entire fight. Now, usually if you have a ranged character, this is, you'd be able to show off your strength by firing in firing at him even though he moves around all the time but the truth is you can actually jump to all the different locations that he's that he teleports to I'm saying this with the hope that he'll teleport someplace and I can show you sadly he doesn't want to move he also keeps on changing his crossbows anyways I'm stopping my DPS because I'm hoping he'll jump to someplace else and I can show you how it looks Meanwhile, I'm just clearing out some of these monsters. Anyways, you can see he's using his fire crossbar or crossbow. Come on, do something. Put on a show. Here, now he changed to his force crossbow. I think he has acid and he might have some other ones. I'm not sure. Anyways, he's not, he's not cooperating, so I guess that means he needs to die. The Orthon Archer collapses from your relentless blows. Now, somewhere in Once the you beat him, should be the you get another shrine over here chests and you have this portal that's opened by using this lever. Also that Hellfire crossbow might not be a great light repeating 
crossbow, but might be worth it just for the cosmetic. It's pretty cool. Anyways, I'm too lazy to shrine again. I just buffed and I barely spent any of my buffs, so let's just go. Anyway, this is the final area. I'm just going to get out the breakables before I start this fight. Those are some collectibles. Anyways, I think that's it. Primus is attempting to summon the Devil General to this tent. But when he sees you, Primus stops his incantations and fumes. It's you again! What does it take to make you give up? My Abishai minions, come, destroy the mortal pests! As I said at the beginning, this raid is heavy on cutscenes. But at least it's interesting. Mm, they don't lock you down. This first phase is pretty easy. It's just like a token phase, preparing you for the real boss fight. You get these five Abishai, all five colors, and you kill them all, and you get the next cutscene. The electric one is still here. Predictable. Anyways, check this out. Abishai over here must be big fans of Power Rangers. is one big Abishai who periodically changed to another random big Abishai. Uh, every time it changes, it has a random chance of changing to one of the different five, including its original color, the one it's at right now. So it might stay in the same form for multiple rounds. Now they, each one of them has a few unique attacks and also the dragon attack every time he puts up these big clouds just move out of it standing inside make it take unnecessary damage ow Some of these Abishai can be really, really annoying. This one's okay. Not too bad, nothing special. The Black Abishai is actually kind of dangerous. What he does is he casts Greater Dispel, taking off some of your buffs. So if you're not aware of which buff just got dispelled, he might surprise you.
You know, back to the green again. As I said before, the main thing you have to watch out for with these guys is not standing inside of their clouds. This guy has 625,000 hit, hit points on Epic Elite. So, it just takes a long time to hit him down. Well, long time for me at least, so I apologize. On the other hand, that gives me an opportunity to show off all five Abishai, hopefully. If my RNG plays to me and they change. Here we go, this is the white Abishai. And here is the dragon attack. Every once in a while they transform to a dragon. I don't know actually what that does, that dragon breath, I suspect it turns you into ice like a regular dragon, but he never hit me so I don't know. And I don't intend on checking it out, I can live without knowing, it's fine. Every few minutes it also spawns another round of these devils. Okay, and here we are. This is the red Abishai. The one I personally dislike the most for all the wrong reasons happens to be the white Abishai because he heals from electricity and I happen to have a proc that blasts electricity and every time I hit him it heals him and that's kind of annoying anti-DPS here I got blasted with four negative levels I didn't realize he dispelled my death ward not a big deal but something to be aware of. Also, when he goes into dragon form, he does this special attack with these black tentacles. You do not want to stand in the black tentacles. It's probably the worst one to stand in. Gives you this curse who prevents you from healing. So, again, it's very easy to avoid uh, standing in the, f in, in the fog. Just move away. They don't run after you while they're doing that attack. So, just get out of range and wait for a few seconds the fact is that this raid on heroic and elite, uh, heroic and epic is essentially the exact same raid. It means it's all the same monsters and it's the exact same layout. There's nothing really different about it. There's no different bosses or anything. Everything behaves the same, as far as I can tell. Oh look, we got the electric one. Anyway, so for a level 6 raid, this is some really, really special content to come out, come and try out whole group of level 8 players doing this on Elite. You don't get to see quests like this, usually at this level. I mean, maybe now there are a few, but this is pretty epic, I think, especially for the level. The Electric Dragon.
I don't know what is it what is it about this sleet storm. Could be it's because I'm wearing an item that has freedom of movement, so it doesn't affect me at all. It is possible, by the way, to get rid of all of these AOEs, these big clouds. You got like a gust of wind, you can get a bunch of scrolls and cast it, basically for free. But, I don't know, moving away is fine. It's not like he runs after you while he's doing it, so you get a few seconds to heal, rebuff, etc. This being knocked over is kind of annoying. Luckily I've got plenty of hit points and I'm not worried at all. Here I stood inside of the fog and I got the curse. Basically it's very easy to get rid of. Just make sure you've got some remove curse potion and you'll be fine. I'm back to green again. first boss in the bank was about 200,000 hit points. The second one was like 150 if I'm not mistaken. And this one is 625,000. So basically three times as much as the first boss. And yeah, it takes a long time. The Abishai well, of course you get a swirl of power. At almost the same moment, you become aware of something new and powerful arriving in the tent. A gigantic devil now stands next to Tremus. It stares disdainfully down at him and bellows, Why do you summon me, Tiefling? Are you so eager to die? You're the one who will die when I use the sliver of time to drain your youth! The sliver of time shattered? How? <laughs> Idiotic tiefling. You cannot steal you from one who is immortal. No! Mercy, my lord Suleimanis! I think I shall take you back to Shalorath and have you put to the question. This pit fiend devil is the same one I killed in the raid of the vision of destruction. Anyways, that's it. We're done here. Use the teleport portal to get out. And again, we have to go back onto the top of the bank by going through this tavern. So 
talking to this guy will finish the raid. So, make sure you get your voice of master on before you talk to him. The devil magics around the market tent have finally reached their peak. Whatever they are and there we to go. Do, this is going to be our now. final cutscene. Basically, you get to experience what happened in the live event. I guess the developers felt like it was too much time and effort put into a single time. So, this way you get to relive it again and again. And for everyone who missed it. I'm just kidding. It just looks really good. I have nothing against it. This is how history recorded the end of the devil invasion on Stormreach. Death and destruction across the marketplace, and the complete annihilation of the old market tent. I think I missed some breakables, or maybe I could have killed a few more monsters if I wanted to spend even more time, but 51 minutes. Yep, that was long enough. Well, it's much better than my 70 something minutes. 78 minutes, maybe? My first run. This thing actually, gem of many facets, can be used as a set bonus for the Corthos items or the items that come from the red fans. And this is it Greater Token of the Twelve. Yeah, and that's that. Again, this is something, this raid you can be done really fast. If you just skip all the optional kills, and if you do this with a party and have the extra DPS, you're good to go. Anyway, as soon as I step out of the quest, I run through and I go to the marketplace. It basically teleports me to the other side of the marketplace, near the quest giver. And as usual, don't forget to pick up your quest reward, or your raid timer will not reset. That's that. Well, hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll keep on playing this cool content for you guys. Bye.